Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where I help you with your career search. Today we are interviewing a respiratory therapist to learn a little bit more about the occupation. Amy from the YouTube channel Breathe Easy is a respiratory therapist in the Las Vegas area. Her YouTube channel Breathe Easy has a lot of information on what it's like being a respiratory therapist. I have linked both the YouTube channel and the Instagram account below, and let's get on with the interview. Okay, I'm here with uh, Amy Cardosa from Breathe Easy. She has both an Instagram account and a YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. With thanks for joining me today, Amy. Um, so, what motivated you to become a respiratory therapist over other occupations? So, um, one, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I always get really excited to talk about what I do because not a lot of people really know what a respiratory therapist is. So, anytime someone's interested, I'm like, "Oh, me, pick me. I'll tell you all about it." Um, but when I was kind of looking around. I knew I wanted to do something in healthcare. I wasn't really interested in nursing. I wasn't really interested in uh, PT or OT. And they're, they're all great professions, honestly, but you just have to kind of find something that fits you. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing a lot of research. And I also remembered a specific incident that I had where I met a respiratory therapist and I remember seeing them work in a medical emergency and watching how calm they were. And I remember thinking at that time, man, I need to figure out what that person does. They're one of the common people in the room. What is it they do? Um, and so as I was kind of researching, I thought back to that, and I was like, I wonder what that person did. And so I kind of kept looking into it and eventually found respiratory therapy, started researching the field more, what it actually entails, and I just fell in love with the idea of specializing in a specific body system rather than generalizing in the body as a whole. And now here I am. <laughs> That's awesome. Was there like a career counselor or like someone in your life that kind of influenced your decision to go into it or was it mostly just kind of your own research into it? Um, it was primarily, you know, my research and then I do have a lot of family in the medical field as well. So mm -hmm. I have heard no respiratory therapists. I'm the only one. But um, I kind of heard their perspective on other fields and then asked them about respiratory therapists once I started looking into the field more. And it, it was just a lot of research, kind of understanding more of what the profession actually did. Gotcha. Gotcha. So uh, what school, from what I've read, like basically it requires an associate's degree. There's a lot of respiratory therapy programs all across the country, uh, basically two-year program. I hear it's kind of challenging. Uh, what school did you go to, and was it like a positive experience? Was it pretty tough? Can you go into that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, um, yeah, sure. So there is a minimum requirement of an associate degree for respiratory therapists. Uh, same as nursing, it's minimum of two years, not a prerequisite, depending on the school you go to. And then we actually have uh, not one board exam, but two board exams that we have to pass in order to become licensed and credentialed, whereas many other professions only have one. Um, I personally went to Pima Medical Institute in Las Vegas, and I liked it. It was a really good program. What I do recommend that most people do, because um, with any medical program, it has to be accredited by a state licensure board. So there's, uh, for respiratory therapy specifically, it's the Commission on Accreditation for Respiratory Care. It's called coar.com, and they'll actually keep statistics on board pass rates and how many people enroll and drop out of programs on an annual basis. So it kind of gives you an idea if you're looking for a program, how well that program is doing. So if you see if they have very high board pass rates, you know that they're probably doing something right. So for people that don't have a lot of options in their area or maybe they have you know, five or six schools and they can't decide, I always tell people to go to COARC to kind of get an idea of how that school is doing yeah. with uh, teaching their students. Gotcha. And I'm guessing, well, this is a very hands-on occupation. This is not something, this is not a program you can do like online, you know, it's got to, got to go in. I'm sure there's like a lot of lab work. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a really great point. Every, make sure your the program is licensed and you're accredited by a board. Um, does it depend, does the reputation of the program matter? Like, um, or basically you can go to pretty much any respiratory therapist program and it's not like law where you have to go to the top 10 respiratory 
therapy programs to, you know, get one of the better jobs. Really, it's just um, just go graduate from one of these programs and you'll just have a job immediately. You know, I think it depends on the area, just like anywhere else. But again, I think that comes down to the quality of the program, um, how well they're teaching the students, how well they do on their clinical rotations. And again, that's kind of something you can see through that, through the COARC website. As you can see, if people are passing their boards on the first try every time, which these are very difficult exams. I think the pass rate may be like 60%. Wow. of people pass on their first try. So if you see that they have a high rate of people passing, you know it's a good quality school and you know that that's probably going to be a good place that employers are going to want uh, professionals from also. At least that's what I did when I was looking for schools. <laughs> gotcha. And it, because it's an associate's degree, it's, it, seemed, it would seem like people coming out of these kind of programs, they don't have the level of debt as maybe someone getting, you know, bachelor's, bachelor, bachelor's or a master's degree or some of the other occupations that were even require a doctoral degree. I just did audiologist and yeah, it requires like a four year doctoral degree, very, very mm -hmm. tiny occupation. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some advantages there. Um, yeah, do, sure. do, do a lot of people have get bachelor's degree before going in or do they just go straight high school and then go into an associate's degree? Or do you see a lot of people, I guess, maybe do you have, do you see career changers kind of like going into this occupation? Like people from, that have different pasts, I suppose? Yeah, um, you see a lot. So uh, it is a minimum of an associate. Some some areas prefer bachelors, and the, the profession as a whole is trying to move towards a bachelors to start into the, into the profession. Um, we're not there yet, but there's a lot of states that are kind of leaning towards bachelors only. Um, but we do have a lot of people that switch from other medical professions or even just other professions in general. I've only been in RT for about two years. I did banking before this. Really? Um, I know a lot of people that were uh, EMTs or CNAs, LVNs, LPNs, that switched to respiratory. I know a few nurses that switched over as well. So it, it tends to be a second career for a lot of people. I do know some that started right after high school, but I know more people that ended up shifting into respiratory later. And I think, again, that might just be because uh, not as many people know about the profession. It's a great profession, but we're kind of, you know, uh, a little bit of a secret, I guess. <laughs> not as much anymore during the pandemic, but... <laughs> I'm finding more and more that there's all these healthcare occupation niches that, like, no one knows about. Like mm -hmm. there's respiratory therapists, there's radiation therapists, there's mm -hmm. audio. Like I, didn't, I had no idea what an audio, audiologist was. And I just, I, I kind of went down this rabbit hole and I was like watching people drain earwax from, you know, some, there, there's certain people that develop a lot of earwax and, the, but the, anyways, there's just so many niche healthcare occupations that people don't really know about. They just kind of assume, I think registered nurses and LVNs just do everything which isn't the case. There's just, yeah. So do you, you work in a hospital? Yeah, yeah, so I work in a level one trauma facility and uh, RTs work everywhere. We work every with every patient population from premature infants in the neonatal care unit to pediatric patients, to adults, to trauma, to surgery. Um, we're in every area of the hospital, but Specifically for respiratory therapists, since we deal with the cardiopulmonary system, the heart and the lungs, um, emergency and critical care is kind of our specialty. So if there's an emergency happening or someone's heart or their lungs is stop, there's going to be a respiratory therapist at the head of the bed, uh, along with the physician, if not by ourselves. Gotcha. And it seems like, so they work in hospitals, they work in, uh, I guess, phys doctor's offices, I think, are those the two main like work environments that people would work in after getting like the certification? Uh, yeah, so for our degree, you can work in hospitals, long-term care facilities, long -term care, some right. clinics. Um, we are in research, education. We're kind of all over the place, sleep labs. Um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of different areas, but I think probably hospitals and long-term care facilities are the most common. I never really thought about sleep labs. That's super interesting. I did not think they would be involved in that. That's that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because a lot of a lot of sleep labs, what they're looking for is disordered breathing when you sleep at least that oh, issue. Oh, sleep apnea. So it's kind of a yeah. So it's a special certification that you can get for respiratory therapists. There's there's a separate certification you can get for it as well, but a lot of times they do prefer respiratory therapists in that in that area. Gotcha. So is there is there do you feel like there's a current shortage of respiratory therapists right now? Because it, it sounds like you're doing overtime, right? Like there's just oh yeah. <laughs> maybe the shortage it, it's like other medical uh, professions where the shortage might not be as apparent in big cities, but I know a lot of rural areas have a hard time attracting doctors and other like and nurses and other healthcare um, occupations. So you're feeling the shortage right now in Las Vegas? Oh, absolutely. And I think our biggest problem is uh, one just because of the pandemic and then also because we're not a very well-known profession we tend to run short regardless um there's not many professionals that specialize in mechanical ventilation or life support so when there's an influx during any type of season or if there's a mass casualty we always run short on respiratory therapists um, because most other professions really only get a week or two of training on life support and mechanical ventilation whereas we spend two years focusing on how to use those those machines. So um, we're definitely feeling it here, even in a large city, in the rural cities, I know they're really feeling uh, the shortage of respiratory therapists. We definitely need some more people that are specialized in the areas, <laughs> especially right now. <laughs> yeah, like, so how much are you working a week right now during this corona pandemic? Are you doing like 60 hours a week or something crazy, 70 hours a week? Um, so this week I did 50 hours. I actually just got off of uh, a five-night stretch this morning. Uh, but it, it depends on the area because um, they don't require us to do mandatory overtime, at least not at my facility, but they will call and ask you to come in. Mm -hmm. So if you want to work back you can, and most of us end up doing it because you feel, you know, you, you want to help your coworkers, your patients, and it, it is just so busy right now um, that you know, you want to be there for everybody. So you end up going in anyways. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Makes sense during a pandemic. How is, yeah. um, how is overtime compensated in, uh, I guess in Vegas? Cause I think the overtime laws are different state by state. Yes. I think it in Nevada, you, so basically over 40 hours, your time and a half. And then once you hit 51, yeah. it goes to double time or no. We're just time and a half, anything over 40 hours. Okay. Because I think I, in I some that, states, they get double time at a certain point. It right? is, yes. I think some areas in California, I think it's anything over eight hours, someone told me. And then sometimes there is a, a double time factor. I'm not sure. But um, not in Nevada, unfortunately. For us, it's anything over 40 hours, time and a half. And then, yep, that's it. <laughs> that's, yeah, but that's Nevada is good. a very high pain state for respiratory therapy. I, I went over that in my are. video. It's California and Nevada. I think they're the top two yeah. highest paying states for respiratory therapists as far as base salary is concerned. Uh, right. But yeah, and we like, have a very good cost of living here, too, though, which is, which is something else that's interesting because we are higher paying here. But the cost of living is so much lower, for example, than a state like California. You can get here, a, you know, one two bedroom apartment for maybe a little over a thousand dollars and it's a good size, you know, twelve hundred square foot apartment or so. So it, it makes a difference too when you look at those those factors and figures, right? <laughs> I mean I'm I'm paying two thousand a month in DC, so it's double. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's no state income tax in Nevada. But yeah. uh so what is your favorite thing about this occupation? You said you were a bank teller before this? Or you, you worked was, in bank there? Yeah. You were a bank teller? I worked teller? in banking before. Yeah, I did. Okay. I was a merchant teller, so I worked with all the business clients. Okay. Gotcha. So what is your favorite thing about being a respiratory therapist so far? Just the I connection, like human being, connection, maybe? Yeah, I like being able to help people. And one thing I find really interesting about being a respiratory therapist, since we work throughout the whole entire hospital, I can have days where one day I'll be in the emergency department the next day. I'll be in ICU or in an intermediate care floor. You kind of get to follow people throughout their whole continuum of care, and you get to watch people progress and heal and get better and really get to know people. And um, since we specialize in heart and lungs, we really get to know our patients that have chronic pulmonary disorders, and you just get to watch them grow and heal, and it's amazing to see the differences that you're able to make in people's lives, and that's one of my favorite thing 
<laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think a lot of people would find a lot of meaning out of that kind of work. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, last question, what is your least favorite thing about this? Is it the overtime? Is it the, the night shifts? Is it that, is that kind of like least favorite? So I think with healthcare, there's good and bad. You get to see people progress and you get to see them heal. Um, but then you also get, you know, the sad side of it where people that don't progress and heal. But I think a lot of that is uh, having a good work-life balance and mm. knowing how to de-stress. But that can be the hardest part of this job, I think, especially right now. So other than that, everything else is, is good about it. You know, mm -hmm. you get to you get to follow people's you know, care, like I said, it's a good good living and good work life balance most of the time when you're not in the middle of a pandemic. But if we have more RTs, <laughs> that would be easier. <laughs> right, as long as there's a shortage, yeah, some some hospitals do mandatory overtime. Um, mm -hmm. and that's no one ever wants people want the option of overtime to make you to make more money, but when it becomes mandatory it's a little um yeah, it's unfortunate, I guess. Not not very many occupations have mandatory overtime. Yeah. Usually it's always optional. Mm -hmm. But uh, thanks so much for meeting with me today, Amy. And um, yeah, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So that is the interview. Are you interested in becoming a respiratory therapist? Leave your questions below in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.